scripture has been on my mind days. It's in chapter 1, the book of Joshua, verse 9. It says, have, I, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, but forever thy ghost. We lived in a time and never seen anything like it. Not many people will take the same thing. The leaders fight one another, bite one another, try to destroy each other, all the way down to we the people. If you've ever lived in the time, we need to be strong in the Lord in the day that we live. Might be down at McDonald's eating a hamburger or over there in the place wherever you might be. But wherever you are and whoever you're around, be strong in the Lord. Give thanks where you may be. And there's a song goes when others see Jesus in you. We've ever lived in the time we need to do that. It's the day that we live. Again, we welcome each one that's come this way. Hope all is well within your family. Please, please keep praying for this country of our Because as everyone knows, we are in a mess. Only God can help us get to the place of the rain. And as we go, Oh, it's so good. church house with worry. He worries us to death about every little thing. He uh, tries his best to keep people out of churches now because of worry. He let We let it consume us. We let it eat us from the inside out. We worry about our children. We worry about uh, our jobs. We worry about our finances. We worry about all those things instead of uh, instead of just praying about them. In Philippians chapter 4, worry is just an invitation for us to pray. Every time worry comes up to you, it ought to be just an invitation to pray. I've noticed that your faith is just as big as your God is in your life. And if, if, I, if I grow God, this is just, if I read His Word and I grow God in my life, if He starts growing in my life, then that means that, well, that just pushes worry to the side. 
It just keeps getting pushed out of my life the more that I grow God in my life, right? But a lot of times I feel like people don't, don't grow God and they're consumed by worry. What is worry? Worry is to give way to anxiety, unease, to allow the mind to dwell on difficulty or troubles. And that's what happens. You can't please God when your mind is consumed by what we're going through right now, Ed, whether it's difficult, whether it troubles us. When that consumes us and that gets in our minds, we don't think about nothing else. Lots of distractions. God help us. We need to be consumed this morning with the Word of God and we won't be worried about everything else, will we? If we'll just let God's Word live through us this morning and take over our lives, we won't have to worry. Worry tells a lot of people what they can do. It tells you whether or not you can go to sleep or not. Worry will keep people up all hours of the night. Just get a child that's awake with them. You'll see. You know what I mean? You'll see. You'll be up all night worried. But is that really getting us anywhere? Is that really doing anything in our lives? Or is that just taking away from what we should be doing in our prayer lives? When concern tells you... <clears throat> Concern, there's a difference in being concerned about something and there's also a difference in worrying about something. A lot of people are concerned about things, but when concern starts keeping you up all hours of the night, that's when it's become worry. That's when we start being worried. Now let's see what the Bible says about these things. In uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. I'm going to read it through Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, yet if your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much better than they? Which of, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your statue? God's saying this right here, right now. He said, hey, if you worry, you probably need to go watch the birds. Lord, that's what you need to do. You need to go watch the birds. Anybody ever watch birds? Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 is where we're at. If you ever go watch birds, you start seeing that. Man, they don't even take thought about that. You know what I mean? They just fly up there in the tree, Ed, and they know that at some point in time, something's going to come out because the Lord's going to send them something to eat. You can watch hawks or any kind of bird. They just set up there. I just watch them fields. You know what I mean? Just watch eagles as they fly up the rivers hunting. They know God's going to have something there for them to eat at some point in time. They might not know when exactly it's going, but they know if they'll wait. Up. They don't even think about that. They don't even take thought upon these things. And it goes on to say, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto your statue? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and toil, not neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God also clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Now look at this next part. O ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem lies, Ed. That's why he said it right. O ye of little faith. He said, hey, why are you worried about these things? Because you have little faith. I think that's the problem today with God's people as far as us getting out and doing the work of the Lord and all these other things is because we have little faith. How are we going to increase our faith? By the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the... Once we read the Word of God, once we hear the Word of God, once we hear preachers preach the Word of God, it should increase our faith. Has somebody ever come up to you? I'm talking about somebody that's full of God's Spirit, and they're like, hey, let's go down here and let's go, let's go tell these people about Jesus. And you're like, well, almost sick at your stomach because the fear comes over you of like, I can't do that. You know? And then you get worried, well, what if I get down there and this happens or that happens? Or, well, I know what goes on in that house if I go up in. But the person that you're with has such a boldness because of like, I'm just going to do this anyways. It's like they have no fear. They have no worry whatsoever about going to this place no matter what's there. 
It don't matter if, I mean, there might have been three or four people murdered in the house. I know a preacher one time, son, there was a 50% chance of a house over in Andrews. If you went into that house, you wasn't going to make it out alive. Most of them was overdoses. I mean, 50% of the people that went there and stayed there back in the 90s and through the early 2000s, they died then. They didn't make it. I know a preacher, he just walked right up in there. He said, I know what's going on here. He just wanted them to know that he knew and that he was praying for him. And two of his deacons went in there with him. He wasn't a bit afraid of that. You know what I mean? Why? Because the Spirit of God gives us boldness and it gives us that faith. And if we read the Word of God, we have the faith to go to these places and do these things without hesitation, Ed. Do you know what I mean? It's just a matter of us being Spirit-filled believers. And us, but the problem is, it's just like Christ, it's just like Jesus said, O ye of little faith. We need our faith to grow. Son, if, if we ain't got no, if we if we've got the same faith that we had, I'm talking about 20 years ago or 12 years ago, then something's wrong. Then something's wrong. If we ain't doing nothing for God but the same thing we was doing just a little while, then something our faith should increase enough to where we should be able to do things a little bit more than we used to do. And how are we going to increase that? By hearing the Word of God. The thing about worry is this morning I heard a story about worry. He said this guy was worried himself to death and just had anxiety and so much stress in his life that he um, was going to take his life. He says he climbed up on top of the building up there and said, he got up there and you know, everybody calls 911. They come in and said, the firefighter came in says, as he come in, he goes up there and tries to talk him down. He says, I'll tell you what we'll do. He says, I'll tell you all my worries, and you tell me all your worries. And then we'll, we'll see who's got the most worries. Well, they said, as they got to talking about their worries and stuff like that, they said, at the end, both of them jumped off the roof. <laughs> because they was both depressed. They was both worried to death about stuff. Ain't that how it works? When I start worrying all the time, I put them worries on somebody else. You ever, maybe it's your spouse. You ever live with somebody that just worries constantly? And then before you know it, they've told you so much about what they're worried about that you're worried about the same thing that they're worried about. Anybody else do that? You're worried about the same And you had not even never thought about it. You know what I mean? Just like me and Dick, we get together, I go to talk to him about something. Just, I'm, I'm just worried to death about it. And then before it's over with, Dickie spends the rest of the day worrying about the same thing that I'm worried about. I'm sure you're Deacon. I'm sure Deacons, man, they have Deacons meetings. And I'm sure they get there. One of them tells them we're worried about something going on there. And then before you know it, all of us worried about something going on there. And what we need to be doing is just praying about it. And according to Philippians chapter 4, worry is an invitation for God's people to come together and pray. Amen. And pray. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. We just need to get together and pray about it. So you know what? Enough of this. You know what I mean? I mean, you ever lay in bed at night and just let worry just consume you? And you just lay there with your eyes wide open praying, God, I don't know. If you get up out of bed and you go humble yourself before the Lord, see, that's where people don't like to. Especially it seems as if the older we get, it's just so much easier just to lay there than to roll out of bed. But I can remember my 87-year-old grandpa saying, I don't worry about nothing anymore. He said, I just pray about it. I said, do you not worry about your, your daughters? Do you not worry about... Because some of them was out there, my mom and my aunts and stuff. And he's like, no. He said, I don't worry about them. I said, why? He said, because I got over that a long time ago. He said, I realized it wasn't helping them none and it wasn't helping me none. And if I'm going to be around and continue to pray for them, then I need to quit worrying about it. He said, so I just rolled out that way. He said, son, you can't pay me to worry about that bunch. What did he say? He said, you couldn't pay me to worry about them girls right now. He said, I'll just roll out of bed. He said, I'll walk in there in the living room. I'll get down to that old chair. And he said, I'll go pray. He said, as I pray, he said, I'll go back in there and I'll just lie down. He said, I'll go to sleep. My grandma used to say, I don't sleep at night. He'd say, when I get in bed, I go to sleep. Why? Because he didn't worry about it. He didn't worry about it. That's what God's people are lacking right now. We're, sick. We're worried about every single thing that there is going on in this world. 
instead of praying about it. <clears throat> so as I, as I was reading this verse yesterday, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians real quick, uh, chapter 6. This is one of them. I always think about Patrick when I read this verse. if he was reading this when God saved him. You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever think about people when you read the Bible? Like when God first spoke to me it was in you know Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 and 32. Man, God spoke to me that day. And, and I know He spoke to Patrick over at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But it's good to know. That's a testimony. You know what I mean? When we let people know what God spoke to them. That's why it's important just to share scriptures one with another. I like hearing when people say it because that puts something in you. You know that God spoke to them because you've heard it so many times. And you never get tired of it, do you? Listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is what God showed me. I'm going to be honest with you. Dickie, I got to looking up. I got to looking up commentaries saying, what does this mean? What does that mean? What does this right here mean? And then as I was looking at them commentaries, Todd, I started realizing what, what, what the Spirit told me. So then I got to looking on, I said, well, I'm going to look up more commentaries. Maybe the Spirit spoke something, something. I couldn't find it. But I'm just going to give you what the Spirit gave me because I'm going to trust in Him. You know what I mean? He said this right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. You look that up, abusers of themselves of mankind. That so that means homosexuality. That means they're abusing themselves in those homosexual acts. That's what everything else will show you. But I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. The Holy Ghost said that the abusers of mankind is us that worry. We abuse ourselves. Do we not? By worrying. Tell me that don't take a toll on your health. Tell me that worrying, laying there, it causes high blood pressure for one. Two, it causes anxiety, Ed. And three, there's people dying every day because they've worried themselves to death. You ever heard the saying? Man, they worry themselves to death all the time. That's exactly what's going on. They've got high blood pressure. They lay in there panting, their heart beats funny. Just because they're so consumed by what? If that ain't abuse, I don't know what abuse is. Is that not abuse in the body that God gives us? Laying there worrying about something constantly? Not knowing nothing about it? What's up? Just worrying about it, Dickie. I mean, we do it. Is that not abuse? Do you know what abuser is? An abuser this morning <clears throat> is one who, who treats something or someone with cruelty and violence. Tell me it's not that. Tell me it's not cruel and it's not violent. It's killing yourself every time you start thinking about a worrisome thought. Well, I don't know. I, don't, I worry about him. I worry about him getting saved. But yesterday, I always pray for him. And I always say, Ben, Jesus is going to save you one day, son. I tell him that. And then I'll pray, God. I'll say, God, will you please save Ben? So yesterday, Ed, as I was worried once again, praying at the same time, saying, God saved my boy. At dinner time last night, I said, Ben, save the blessing. He says, Lord, thank you for this food. And Jesus saved me. Amen, brother. He saved me one day. He said, Jesus <laughs> saved me one day. Well, that's good. Son, he's asking him already. You know, he's three years old. He said, Hi, hey, Jesus. <laughs> Will you save Amen. me one day? Amen. Amen. That's what we need to teach them. Just tell them, don't let them, hey, Jesus is going to save you one day. That needs to be instilled in them. Yeah. I tell you where I got that. I used to listen to Chris Rumpfuck tell that little girl on his all time. <coughs> He'd say, Callie, Jesus is going to save you one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And guess what? He, that young man's got an anointing on her life after God said, she can help save anybody in the country. Absolutely. I don't care if it's the inspirations. I don't, she sings better than any of them. Any of them. And then he starts praying. He's going to say, Jesus is going to save me. And he'll, he starts asking me. he said, Jesus, I want you to save me one day. We need to put that in. Boy, I don't worry. <laughs> My, his dad was worried. And then all of a sudden, he just took it away at that point in time. I looked up. His mom, was, she had tears in her eyes. Her eyes were water. She's, I thought, man, 
We had company too around the table. I thought, I ain't gonna worry about this. God knows what he's doing. And if Ben just already asking him, Jesus saved me one day. I say he's gonna do it, wouldn't you? He'll do it. In spite of his circumstances, in spite of what's going on in the world, in spite of what's going on around us, the God will save him. All we've got to do is ask him. You know how many youngins I've seen out there that had a grandma that prayed for them constantly, and then their parents never even go to church, and somehow that little youngin gets to come to church one Sunday, and God saves them. They might not know the word after that, but He saves them. But the Bible goes on to say right here in verse 11, And such were not some of you, but were washed, but were sanctified and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit. But it says that we should, we will not inherit the kingdom of God on down through here if we take part in these things. Here's the thing that got me on this part right here, Dickie. So you mean to tell me that I'm not going to inherit the kingdom if I'm abusing myself and I'm worried all the time? Of course you're not. Because for one, if the kingdom of God's within, right? And worry is within then I'd say the kingdom of God and word is not going to dwell in the same place. Because which one is ruling? King Jesus, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In earth, that's what I'm not on earth, it says in earth, that's what I'm made of. That's what I'm made of. It says in earth as it is in heaven. But thy worry come, thy worry will be done in earth as it is in heaven, man. Amen. If I'm just going to worry all the time, that's my king, ain't it? That's the one that keeps me up all night. I serve it. It tells me whether or not I can go to sleep or not, Dickie. It tells me whether or not I can go to certain places. Hey, there's some people now It tells them whether or not they can go to church. You believe that? It tells people whether or not they can go to church right now. Because I'm not saying just worry because of the Bible. They're worried that something might happen. Somebody might bust in them doors right now. And shoot us. Somebody, they are so consumed by what if? What if that happens? What if it don't happen? And then you stand before God and you say, Well, I was worried about somebody coming in the door. He's going to say, Well, I told you 365 times, fear not. Don't fret. Don't worry. I was, just, I was trying to get you to pray. But yet, all you're going to do is worry about stuff. It's not worth it this morning. It's not worth us worrying about sorts of things. Financing. How many people in here? I heard a testimony this morning. This guy said in his testimony, he said that hey, he was, uh, he said that he, he was, uh, he won't eat fish. No. Says he hates the taste of fish. Says he hates them. Says he'll eat seafood, but he won't touch fish. He said, I'll tell you why. He said, when I was growing up, he said, we lived close to the beach. And he said, there was times my dad would work, but there was times he'd be out of work. And he said, you know what we done when he's out of work? We went fishing. He said, we eat fish for breakfast, for lunch, supper, and for dessert. That's all we had was herring. That's a little bony fish. All we are is a bone. You know what I mean? And he said, he'd take big nets. He'd catch them things, you know. He said, we'd go home cooking, and that's what we would eat for supper. He said, but I never went hungry. He said, that's what our Heavenly Father's trying to tell us here in Matthew 6. You ain't going to go hungry. He's going to take care of us better than anybody. He said, I know it might not be what I wanted that fit. He said, but Dad was going to do whatever it took to feed us. You don't think your Heavenly Father's going to do whatever it takes this morning to make sure his children's taken care of? Hey, we don't need to be worried about nothing. He's going to do whatever it takes to take care of his children. And that's what a father does, ain't he? He protects, he provides for them. That's what he does. And just like this man catching them fish, he's doing whatever it took. He might not have had work at that time, or he might have been laid off. But he said, them babies got to eat. I'm going to do whatever it takes to feed them. And that's what our Heavenly Father does. He's going to do whatever it takes. But yet, we're going to sit around. We're going to worry ourselves to death about all kinds of things going on in this world. I don't care who gets elected as president. 
You know what God's going to do? He's going to take care of me. I ain't worried about it, Dad. He ain't never left me nor forsaken me. Some of you old time, why? You ain't never been hungry. Why? Because He's took care of what makes you any different than me. He's going to take care of me the same as He has anybody else because He loves me. He loves me this morning and He's going to take care of me. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You can't stop Him from taking care of His children, Dickie. Nobody can stop Him. I was, I was thinking about concern and worry. Concern is something that, that we own. You know what I mean? We can be concerned and not, but worry, it owns you. There's people here in the parking lot all over the country who is owned by worry. Do you not think that's just as much sin as murder or anything else no because it's looked at different and a lot of times you can't see worry you know what I mean you might be able to hear it if somebody's saying it but how many of us probably this week got worried about something if we be honest with each other three four people worry about we worry don't we we worry about all kinds of stuff stuff that might not ever happen we worry about we conjured up in our minds. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you think about it, if we was where we needed to be at with God, and we had confidence in the God that we serve, confidence in the God that we serve, we wouldn't be worried about it, would we? So this week when we start worrying about stuff, we just need to call on Him and say, God, we know that You're way bigger than this. Like I said, Your faith is just as big as your God is. Yeah. So you're saying this morning that your worry is bigger than your God. Well, what if I get this stuff? You know what I mean? What if, what if some liberal gets in there in the office? What, what, what if? And we, we let that consume us because our God's about this big and our worry is about this big. And that takes over our whole lives because worry is our God. I mean, it's it's an if you put it first. There's people that are medicated today because of worry. There's people that have worried so much that have made themselves physically sick. Have to take medicine for it, Todd. It consumes their life. It consumes everything around them. They can't be the parents, the fathers, the mothers. They can't be none of that stuff that they desire or want to be because they're worried to death. You ever seen a worried person try to raise a kid? I mean, somebody just worries all the time, son. I don't do that. You know what I mean? You'll get hurt if you do that. I mean, son, just worry themselves to death. Well, some of y'all have been there, ain't you? You've done that. I mean, just something's going to happen. What if they break their arm? What if they get killed? What if, what if, what if? And then somebody that has lost a child, they say, well, what if I wouldn't have done that? And they start worrying about something happening to the rest of the children around. Guys, it's time God's people quit worrying. We realize who our Heavenly Father is and just how big He is and that He's going to take care of us, Jerry. He's going to take care of me and you. Even though sometimes I don't even like me, He still loves me. And He's going to take care of me, Dick. No matter what, if we'll just trust Him. Concern. The size of your faith is dependent on the size of your God. Well, a worried person this morning is truly not submitted to God. A person that worries all the time, man, they're not submitted to God. God or not. You can say, well, I'm submitted to God, or I'm submitted to God. You're not. If you were submitted to him, then that worry would be behind you. You know what I mean? You'd just be, you'd pretty much be like, worry, guess what? You don't know my God. You'd just be like, hey, look, hey, you don't know the one that I serve. You don't know my God, Dickie. You know what? That's how you should talk to worry when it gets on you. Do you not know the one that I serve? Well, he's going to take care of that. Get away from me. 
If that's not a device from Satan, I don't know what it is, and I think it eats God's people alive, especially right now during this day and time and the things going on around us. It worries us. And we bring it on ourselves, usually by turning the TV on, you know what I mean, or, or by listening to somebody else's problems that they're worried about all the time. God's going to save your youngins. Amen. He will. As long as you do what He says, He'll save you. Don't worry about that stuff. A lot of times when you listen to statistics, anyways, it limits you. You know what I mean? It limits you to what you think your God's capable of. That's just the truth. <clears throat> so God's telling us in these verses this morning over in Matthew 6, we need to look around us this morning. He said we need to take a look at Mother Nature. She's totally submitted to God's will. And them little birds and everything out there, he's like, look at this. Look at how I take care of them. Take time to go bird watching and see <clears throat> if I don't take care of these guys. And if you don't think I'm going to take care of you, listen, Go to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah 26. It says this right here. Isaiah 26, 3. <clears throat> that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me because he trusted in me. That's a good scripture, ain't it? Amen. Write that down. Put that somewhere else where you can look at that and know that if you want to overcome worry this morning, here it is. Amen, brother. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Right. So you mean to take... And then it goes... Because he trusteth in thee. So if I'm trusting in him, then my mind stayed on him. I'm meditating upon the Word of God. I'm thinking about the Word of God. I'm knowing how to overcome these things because I know the Scripture's hit in my heart that I may not sin against Him. And if it's hit in my heart that I may not sin against Him, if I'm worrying all the time, then I need to get some more Scripture in my heart, I'd say. I need to know. I need to say, well, Philippians chapter 4 says that worry to me is just an invitation for me to pray. I need to be thankful during these times. God, help me right now. I don't need to be worried. Thou shalt not commit adultery. In my mind, I know what the Bible says. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So if I try to commit adultery in my mind, I capture that thought. I take it in obedience to stop Christ before that thought captures me. And I say, Lord, help me to overcome this. Worry ain't no different this morning. Go to Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm done. Remember that scripture, Isaiah 26, verse 3. Write that on the tablet to your heart. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. Your hope can't be in nobody else in this world, not right? It needs to be in Him. It goes on to say this. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh. So when troubles come in, it ain't even going to bother you. Listen, it says, But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful, which, not, which means do not be anxious in the year of the drought, neither shall they see from yielding fruit. So when those dry times come in our life, it ain't going to hurt us not one bit. We're still going to be able to bear fruit if we trust in Him. A lot of times when worry or dry times come to somebody's life, Dickie, they're like, they just stop. They stop producing fruit. They stop coming to church. They stop serving the Lord. It's important this morning that we deal with this worry that's captured us and got us so captivated. And consuming us. When this starts, you know how it goes on to say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Worry puts God second in your life. It just does. It puts him second. You got worry, and then you got my God. I mean. He don't think. But when you when you say, 
I'm not doing this. I'm not, you're not going to kill me with this Satan. I'm not ignorant of your devices. Here's my God, and here you are, and He's over you. And that's where we need to be at this morning. So what do we do, need to do in order to do that? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto me. So if I seek Him first, then that means word has got to go here, and my God's got to go here. Who's on the throne? There's people coming in God's house this morning worried to death about everything. Worried to death about getting here. Worried to death about the surroundings. Ed. Worried to death about every single little thing coming and going. And we get to church, and we worship worry more this week than we have our God. Because worry is bigger than your God. It's a personal relationship that makes God bigger than worry. That's it. Nothing else makes it bigger. I thank y'all this morning.